Welcome back to another what if video about CM Punk. New year, same me, am I right? This is the third and final CM Punk what if video I am making because I do not want to milk this series with CM Punk. I've already made two of these, one of them looking at a timeline where CM Punk never leaves WWE back in 2014, and another one where we take a look at if CM Punk had went over to All Elite Wrestling when those rumors were still active. They are both some good videos and I recommend that you do watch them. However, in today's what if video, we are going to enter an alternate universe where CM Punk returns in 2020. With Punk semi returning to work with the company on WWE backstage, it's now the most likely time that he possibly makes a return inside that ring. The entire wrestling fan base wants to see him have one last run and main event a WrestleMania. To make this video more concise, I decided that I will have a thorough and detailed description of what will occur over the next three years from 2020 through 2022, assuming CM Punk signed a three-year contract. This is going to be a WWE Universe where CM Punk plays a factor in the mix of the company. Additionally, I'm going to make this as realistic as possible and not be biased with my fantasy booking. So if you aren't a fan of some of the things that are going to happen, do not blame me. Blame how WWE would most likely book his return. With all that being said, let's jump right into a timeline of CM Punk returning to in-ring action with WWE in 2020. The first year we are going to cover is obviously 2020 and let's jump right into the pay-per-view where CM Punk would probably make his epic return. Royal Rumble 2020, the men's Royal Rumble match. A guaranteed chance at the main event match of WrestleMania 36 for either the Universal or WWE Championship. With WWE now spoiling almost every return by announcing it on WWE Backstage, or Sports Illustrated revealing the news on Twitter, I think CM Punk is one of the few exceptions to this rule. He's the type of wrestler who wants to preserve the huge surprise return for the fans. Punk really loves entertaining the WWE audience. He even kept his WWE backstage debut a secret and that wasn't even that serious. I'd imagine he would be extra cautious with his actual in-ring return. Anyways, Back to the Royal Rumble pay-per-view, the countdown for the number 30th entrant appears with the crowd excitedly counting down from 10 to 1 waiting to see who will be the last participant in this match. That's when they hear a static sound effect with the cult of personality playing right after. CM Punk would officially make his grand return at the pay-per-view where he would quit 6 years later at the Royal Rumble in 2014. This would probably result in one of the loudest pops in recent history. Obviously, CM Punk's going to win the entire thing to ensure that he will be at this year's WrestleMania in the main event. There will be a small percent of fans who don't agree that CM Punk should be victorious since he's been gone for so long, and it's better to build up someone like Aleister Black or Mustafa Ali, but I'm sorry, realistically speaking, if CM Punk agreed to make a return, WWE would make sure he wins the Rumble and is going to have the biggest match at WrestleMania. You could say goodbye to all the other plans that were made prior to his return, throw them in the garbage. This comeback would completely shift everything. The next part of the road to WrestleMania is CM Punk announcing who he is choosing to wrestle on the next night on Raw. This would be the first promo CM Punk is cutting on a live show in 6 years, but that doesn't mean he will be rusty. He's still got it. Ideally, he should be on SmackDown since Fox signed him and they could use more top stars. However, it would just be too odd for CM Punk to compete against Bray Wyatt for the Universal Championship. There really is no history there, and I don't think it would make for a more compelling matchup than Brock Lesnar and CM Punk battling in a rematch from their SummerSlam bouts. Also, CM Punk fighting for the prestigious WWE Championship sounds much better. Therefore, on that episode of Raw, CM Punk will announce that he will be wrestling Brock Lesnar in the main event of WrestleMania 36 for the WWE Championship. In terms of the storyline between Brock Lesnar and CM Punk, it's literally so easy and simple. CM Punk can come back to say that Brock Lesnar was a major part of the reason why he left the company. Lazy part-timers like him have been ruining the company from having a proper world champion and they took away his opportunity at the spotlight, especially main eventing WrestleMania. Since Lesnar has been champion for basically the last three years, 
it's honestly one of the better storylines they could write on TV. CM Punk would probably drop a few more pipe bombs talking about how he is here to save WWE and get rid of the part-time champion. Paul Heyman could bring up the fact that he books the matches backstage and therefore he wants to raise the stakes and make this match the official main event of WrestleMania. Paul Heyman says that Brock Lesnar is going to show CM Punk the main reason why he never main evented a WrestleMania. It's because he doesn't have what it takes to be a top guy. They claim that he will choke when the pressure is on the same way he did with The Undertaker at WrestleMania 29 and The Rock at the Royal Rumble in 2013. I don't know about you guys, but this could seriously be something special. Fast forward to WrestleMania and CM Punk defeats Brock Lesnar in the main event proving Paul Heyman, Brock Lesnar and all of his haters wrong, getting his redemption and his main event he's desperately wanted. CM Punk is happy, the fans are happy, and most importantly, Vince McMahon is happy because he's making more money in the end. On the following nights, CM Punk would have a promo talking about his very special journey. He would get pretty emotional speaking about it, and the fans ultimately would give him a loud, you deserve it chance. The celebration comes to an end when Seth Rollins and the Authors of Pain come down to the ring. Rollins would talk about how he had to carry this company while CM Punk just bitched and walked out. He tore his ACL and he put his body on the line every single night while CM Punk just cried for 6 years and was handed a WrestleMania main event. These lines are shortly followed by a beatdown from the three men. Yes, you guessed it right, this is CM Punk's next feud right after Brock Lesnar. According to the pay-per-view structure from last year, WWE will be hosting Money in the Bank right after WrestleMania. Although I'm not a huge fan of this because I think it should happen a couple months later in June or July, it is what it is. Anyway, CM Punk vs Seth Rollins would be a great matchup for the pay-per-view, especially since Money in the Bank usually has top matches. Obviously, CM Punk would be victorious in this match and he would not drop the championship so soon. Seth Rollins would get another rematch, which would be at Extreme Worlds where he would lose yet again. This is the last time we see Seth Rollins challenge CM Punk. Their feud is over. The WWE Champion needs a new opponent who is on Monday Night Raw, and that man is none other than AJ Styles. CM Punk vs AJ Styles would be one hell of a SummerSlam main event dream match. This feud could be similarly booked the same way that the Rollins feud was booked. Basically, the OC keep attacking CM Punk, and that's how they start their beef. There's also the dream match factor element to it. Everyone wanted to see these two square off inside a WWE ring, but AJ Styles came too late, but now they have the opportunity. At SummerSlam, there is no way that CM Punk would lose to an older AJ Styles who is probably in his last year with the company because he wants to retire young. CM Punk wins the match and remains as the WWE Champion. CM Punk and AJ Styles have one more match at Clash of Champions, but CM Punk still wins. He now needs a new WWE Championship feud up until Survivor Series and Andrade would be absolutely perfect to fill up that role. After building up some wins and becoming the number one contender, you could easily transition him into the WWE Championship picture. At Hell in the Cell, CM Punk and Andrade would battle it out inside the cell because they want to prevent any shenanigans with Selena Vega who kept interfering in the matches with CM Punk. CM Punk wins this match but Andrade has a strong showing. The two are supposed to have another match at Crown Jewel, but CM Punk would probably refuse to go to Saudi Arabia. He's the type of guy to only do things he believes in and he's super against stuff like that. Therefore, him and Andrade having match on Raw the week before Crown Jewel with the championship on the line. CM Punk wins that and wraps up this feud. Now it is time for Survivor Series. Since CM Punk is the WWE Champion, he is going to be involved in the main event triple threat match with the Universal and NXT Champion. The Universal Champion would most likely be Roman Reigns, while Tommaso Ciampa is probably going to be the NXT Champ. In this triple threat match, Drew McIntyre would come out of nowhere and hit CM Punk with a Claymore kick costing him the match and allowing Roman Reigns to get the pinfall. This sets up the next WWE Championship feud. Drew McIntyre is sick of CM Punk's return and he wants an opportunity at that title. At TLC, Drew McIntyre and CM Punk have a ladder match, and in this ladder match, McIntyre handcuffs Punk's wrist to the ropes and retrieves the championship, becoming the WWE Champ. This is a special moment and will be the beginning of a dominant reign by Drew McIntyre, and that wraps up 2019. 
Now, let's cover what will happen in the new year of 2021. CM Punk will continue his feud with Drew McIntyre and officially have his rematch for the WWE Championship at the Royal Rumble, but ultimately he will come up short. The next pay-per-view is the Elimination Chamber and CM Punk is a part of that match for the championship, but still fails to win back his championship title. Now it's WrestleMania 37 season and he needs an opponent for the big pay-per-view. I think what WWE would want is one last match between CM Punk and his greatest foe, John Cena. These two had so many battles, but never battled it out at WrestleMania. Therefore, a returning John Cena will face off against CM Punk in their last match ever together, and CM Punk would be victorious and get that one last rip. John Cena doesn't really need a win, and this would be a nice moment. Both of them would proceed to hug one another as they end their last chapter in their long feud. After wrestling a full year, I think CM Punk would request some time off and transition into a part-timer for the next two years on his contract. CM Punk doesn't want to take away the spotlight or championship opportunities from the younger generation. For the rest of the year, he would just have a match at Survivor Series and SummerSlam. As for SummerSlam, a dream match against Aleister Black would be perfect. A win over CM Punk for Black would help elevate him even more into superstardom. And at Survivor Series, he will just be a part of Team Raw in the traditional elimination tag team match. We are in the final year of CM Punk's contract in the year of 2022, and he is just wrestling at two more shows. We have him heading to wrestle inside of the Royal Rumble match, where he would obviously lose. And then, he has one more WrestleMania match, and CM Punk's WrestleMania 38 match will be against Johnny Gargano, who is on Monday Night Raw. I personally think this match would be pretty epic and great, and it's a nice way of putting over one last talent, so Johnny Gargano does win this match. After this match, I don't really know what CM Punk would want to do. He would either be a full-time commentator, possibly re-sign another contract, or just retire and show up to WWE backstage. Out of those three options, he'd probably just retire and go back to enjoying his simple life. CM Punk doesn't really need much, he's a pretty minimalistic person. I think this would just be a return to end on a better note in terms of his wrestling career. I'd say this would be a much more successful and happy ending to such a great career. He would also get inducted into the Hall of Fame the next year, and he wouldn't be erased from WWE history. And that is everything that would happen if CM Punk returned to WWE in 2020. And that is it for the video guys, thank you so much for watching, I hope y'all enjoyed, if you did, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe for more, make sure to follow me on Twitter at Valenplana, and I'll see you all on the next video.